when my normal approach doesn't work on a dog, I go into, okay, I really don't know what to do with him, but he's gonna tell me what to do with him. I am always prepared to tell him, look, I can lead you, but I can also follow you. When I saw that his back legs were more weak, I said, well, I don't really need the back legs. I'm gonna be the back legs. The whole point is just how can I unlock the brain to move forward with the leashes on? We know he can walk, we know that. Crooked and everything, but he walks. And you mark, get set, go. It felt like I was teaching my kids to walk, you know? When you hold their arms and they and they balance themselves and then they say, let me go, and you have to let him go. He's moving. Somehow somebody made him move and the leash is still on him. He's not shutting down. He's not, you know, having the anal glands being sprayed in the air. He feels good. He definitely feels good. Look, he's not going down, sir. Let's keep going. First. Wow, this is the longest. This is the longest. There you go. Don't block him just yet. Give him, yeah, let him pass. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Get feedback. Get feedback from the dog. So we're not following a dominant dog. We're following a dog that barely actually get to know the world. A very curious dog. So him being in front, uh, you know, please don't misunderstand that I'm following the dog. I'm just following, you know, the first time in his life. That's how I see it. I'm following the first time in his life that actually he got to explore the world without fear. It's peeing. The action on the K was definitely peeing on the ground. To them, peeing on a new place, that's like, okay, I own it. And so he owned the moment. And that to me was very important to see. Definitely when I saw that I moved the brain forward is, is definitely a big accomplishment, big relief for him. See, he says, let me go. 